What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today's review will be quite different, as the set I will show you does not come from LEGO. I know this is something new here, and this might be a controversial subject for some of you, so if you are a LEGO purist and you are not interested in other brands, then please just skip this one. So let's start with the basics. The set comes from Kada, which is a brand of the Chinese toy manufacturer Double Eagle. They create mostly RC toys and building block sets. Unlike other well-known Chinese brands, they don't copy directly LEGO sets or custom creations, they have their own designs. This is a really important point for me, it is one of the main reasons why I'm reviewing this set. Most of their previous designs were, well, not that sophisticated, but this set is actually something different. The name is not too exciting, it is called 86 Supercar, the code is C61019W. It has a 1234 pieces, and the price is somewhere between 50 bucks and 110 bucks, depending on the seller and whether you want to have the motorization pack as well. As you see on the box, the set has a quite unique feature. It can be built as a manual version, but you can buy a motorization pack that you can use to make the car remote controlled. We'll have a look at this detail later. So the car itself is not branded by default, it's not a license set. My son said it's a Rover when he first saw it, but actually it seems to be a replica of the Toyota AE86 Sprinter Trueno from the Japanese manga series Initial D. I have to admit that I was not really familiar with the series, so I had a quick look at the animated version, and yes, it really looks like that car, apart from a few details like the missing stickers on the side. About the box, as you see the design is quite nice, you see the car itself on the front with the optional power pack, some dimensions and details on the side, and more features and details on the back. All in all it looks nice, although the material of the box is not the one we usually see with LEGO sets, this one is a much thicker cardboard. So let's open it and have a look inside. You can find an inner cardboard box that works like a tray, it's quite useful. We get tons of bigger and smaller plastic bags, two manuals without extra protection and a sticker sheet hidden in one of the manuals. About the sticker sheet, I think this is one of the weakest points of the set. As you see, the quality is not the best, there are lots of bubbles trapped under the plastic. I hope it won't be visible once the stickers are applied. Now let's see the manual. As you see, the instructions are somewhat similar to the LEGO instructions, although there are differences and the steps seem to be more complicated for the first sight, but we will see soon how easy it is to follow them. If we take a closer look at the pieces, the studded parts are well differentiated, they have a CADA print on every stud, so you will know what you are dealing with. The parts that look like Technic are quite interesting, because in a lot of cases they try to keep the same functionality, but there are some structural or aesthetical differences to ensure they don't look exactly like LEGO pieces. Here you can see that the beams look different. It's easy to tell that the red one is the LEGO one, the right one is the CADA one. Here are a few examples of other pieces. Some gears look almost the same, and some are quite different with the same size. Now here are some parts that are more or less unique. They don't exist at all in the LEGO world, or at least not in this color. This is one that I would be very happy to see as an official LEGO piece, a beam with alternating pinholes on it. Could be very useful. So, let's start building. The quality of the pieces is pretty good, the studied parts work well together. You can feel a slight difference with the pins and beams, Sometimes you need to push them harder to fit in place. I would say the overall quality is around 80-90% compared to the LEGO pieces. Now let's see the instructions. They are quite good and usually easy to follow, although there are a few things that will make the building more challenging. This is one of the small annoyances. The check mark that shows you the good version is marked with red. Most of the time red is used for the wrong option. The previous steps of the assembly are faded to highlight the actual pieces to add, but the color used makes it sometimes difficult to build, you need to get used to see the parts suddenly changing colors. The length of the studded parts is not marked, it would be quite useful sometimes if I didn't need to count the tiny studs on them. It's good to see though the extra images that help you position the parts properly. It is also a very useful feature to have the different assemblies marked with letter and number combinations, especially if there are multiple things to put together. The base of the car is a very interesting mixture of studied and studless pieces, I really like it. It feels like the building of the Creator Expert Mustang, but with even more Technic-like pieces added. Here's a problematic piece that I found, seems to have a little less material than needed. 
Another small error with this one, there's a tiny pin left on one of the studs. You can see the famous 4AG engine finished. It has quite a lot of details and it looks great. Another example of pieces that are quite useful and I don't remember seeing them in this color. The rear section mostly studded with lots of snot building and reinforced with studless beams. Here you can already see the final size of the car. It's actually quite fascinating how the studded and studless pieces are combined here and the fact that such a car has a differential and working suspension is even better. I have to say that I would really really like to see a LEGO Creator Expert car with such details. Once the rear axle is in place you can see how it works. It is a solid axle and it is stabilized with the pan hardware at the rear. This is how the build looks like at the end of section B. The seats are quite nice, they look great with only a few pieces used. Now let's jump to the end of the build, here are the remaining parts. These are not the classic leftover pieces, I guess most of them can be used for the motorization. These accessories are not used yet, but I already built them. Another very cool feature that they included some upgrades. So let's see the car. I think it looks really really great and I have to say the design itself and the building techniques used are excellent. A very appealing mix of system and technique building style with tons of clever solutions. I think the initial D fans can be happy too. The car has lots of details taken from the series. Let's have a look at the functions. The car has an opening hood and trunk and the doors are opening as well. In the trunk we see the famous tofu crate that the hero in the series was delivering. The engine bay looks nice and detailed. We can see some really clever piece usage. The interior is nice and detailed. It also has the cup of water that the fans will instantly recognize. The roof can be removed fairly easily to have access to the interior. We can have a closer look at the details. There's even another car in the rear view mirror. There's no doubt this one is meant to be used for racing. Unfortunately there are no rear seats. This part looks pretty unfinished, but I guess the space was needed for the motorization. The door mechanism works well. It is sturdy enough and easy to operate. You can even find a hood support rod in the engine bay. There's no hand of god steering that would help playing with the car. You can turn the wheels with the steering wheel, but I guess it's actually easier to do the other way around. The rear suspension works well. The gears you see here have no real function in the manual version that are needed for the motorization. My only complaint here can be the brick that supports the hard rod. It gets disconnected quite easily. There's no suspension at the front, but considering the scale and the limited space, it would be a real marvel to put a working suspension there. So let's see the upgrades. There are quite a few of them, but I'm not sure if anything you'll see here comes from the original series. I could not find too much information online. If you are an initial D fan, then please let me know in the comments if anything added here looks like the upgrades made in the series. It depends on your personal preference. I like some of them, but others feel a bit too much. The headlights of the original car can be closed. This mechanism was not replicated here, but you get extra pieces to change them to a closed version. The engine can be also swapped. The V8 upgrade seems to be a Toyota 1UZ that was used in some Lexus models. The side spoilers can be also upgraded. We have to add another layer of plates and flip them upside down. Here is the difference between the two versions. As a final touch there are two rear spoiler versions to choose from. So what can I say about the set? Honestly, I really wish it was an official LEGO release. I think from a design perspective it is very well made, it's clearly on the same level as the LEGO Creator Expert cars, and with the added technical functions I think it's actually one step ahead. I really like the design, the overall look, everything. 
Regarding the quality, the bricks and pieces are almost there. I found some issues, but nothing very serious. The stickers are still the weakest link, I think. Apart from the rough sheet, I don't like the color difference either. The white of the stickers is very different from the white of the bricks. I don't want to say a final verdict about the car yet, because there's a very important extra that I did not show you, the factory motorization option. I already have the necessary pieces here that I will build in soon, so stay tuned for the second video. Once published, you will be able to see the link on the end screen. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss the next review about this car or my upcoming exciting LEGO Technic reviews and motorization videos. See you next time, bye bye!